A man had just gotten home from work when he saw that his sister had collapsed with a fever. Just as he was about to take her to the hospital, he received a call that could change his life. The call was from his girlfriend, Jay He, who sounded very distressed. Hearing her panic, he left his sick sister behind and rushed to Jay He's location. Soon, the man arrived at a hotel. When he opened the door, he was shocked to see a stranger lying on the ground and Jay He cowering in the corner, trembling. It was clear that Jay He had gotten into a fight with the man, and in the struggle, she had severely injured him. The man checked the stranger's pulse and realized he was no longer breathing. This made Jay He even more terrified, and she kept insisting she didn't kill him. But the man saw the glass bottle in her hand and told her to turn herself in to the police. However, Jay He was worried that confessing would ruin her future. In a panic, she picked up a shard of glass, threatening to end things, clearly putting on a show for the man. Not wanting to see her so upset, the man made a decision that he would regret for the rest of his life. He wiped away all traces of Jay He's presence from the room. It was obvious that he was going to take the blame for the murder to protect her. He urged her to leave the scene quickly, but little did he know that as soon as she left, Jay He went straight to another man, hugging him for comfort after the ordeal. Meanwhile, the man foolishly replayed the words Jay He had left him with. The police soon arrived at the hotel, and the man had to face the consequences of his choice. He not only abandoned his sick sister but also threw away his lifelong dream of becoming a doctor. Before this incident, he had been a very talented doctor but now his career had ended in such a tragic way. Six years later, Jay He He had married into a wealthy family the older man who had been involved that night. She even had a son with him, but things were not as smooth as she had hoped. The older man also had a daughter, Yoon Ji, who was only a few years younger than Jay He. Yoon Ji never accepted Jay He as her stepmother, and she didn't even care for Jay He's son. Yoon Ji was well aware that Jay He had married her father with ulterior motives, assuming she was only after the family inheritance. Yoon Ji openly exposed Jay He's scheme and left with the attitude of a spoiled young lady. Meanwhile, the man had been sentenced to five years and was now released. After spending a year abroad following his release, Ma Ru was on a flight back home when a woman suddenly collapsed on him. At first he thought she was flirting with him because of his average good looks, but when he saw her pale face he realized the truth. The woman had fainted because of an illness, and it turned out she was Yoon Ji, the female lead who already had a pre-existing condition. This time, an acute relapse had caused her to faint due to high blood pressure. Luckily, Ma Ru had been a brilliant doctor six years ago. Before attempting to save her, Ma Ru needed consent from her guardian. He asked the staff where her family was, and that's when Yoon Ji's stepmother, Jae Hee, walked over. She didn't seem concerned about Yoon Ji's well-being. Ma Ru was stunned when he saw the guardian it was his ex-girlfriend. Yoon Ji also mentioned that the patient was her husband's daughter. This revelation left Ma Ru in despair, but what shocked him even more was seeing Jae Hee with a five-year-old son. Ma Ru finally realized he had been nothing but a substitute all along. Just as Ma Ru was about to start the rescue, Jae Hee stopped him claiming that he wasn't a doctor anymore, preventing him from saving Yoon Ji during the critical moment. It was clear that Jae He didn't want Yoon Ji to survive. Her motives were clear if Yoon Ji died unexpectedly on the plane, Jae He would become the sole heir to the family fortune. It was the most shameless stepmother Ma Ru had ever seen. As Yoon Ji's condition worsened, Ma Ru ignored Jae He's interference and rushed to save her. Jae He was clearly anxious but only because she feared Yoon Ji would survive. Yoon Ji's blood pressure and pulse finally stabilized. The flight was set to land in 10 minutes, and seeing that Yoon Ji was now out of danger, Ma Ru could finally relax. Ma Ru left the scene without saying a word, leaving Jae He standing there looking disappointed. Perhaps she was blaming her ex-boyfriend for ruining her plans. After getting off the plane, Ma Ru couldn't help but see reminders everywhere of the happy times he had shared with his ex. It made him realize that the promises Jae He had made years ago were just empty words, and in the end, her loyalty couldn't stand up to the temptation of wealth. By now Ma Ru knew full well that the Jae He who had changed would never come back, so he made up his mind to forget her. Meanwhile, Yoon Ji, who had just been saved, showed no gratitude. Instead, she scolded her staff, saying how dare her stepmother entrust her life to someone who wasn't even a doctor. Suddenly, Yoon Ji received a call from her staff informing her that her stepmother had just withdrawn 1 billion won from the company's account. Curious about where Jae He was taking the money, Yoon Ji ordered her staff to follow her, leading them to Ma Ru's house. At that moment, Ma Ru was spending time with his sister, Ki Ki He, who still harbored resentment toward Jae He for what had happened six years ago. Although Ki Ki understood her brother's difficult situation, she still felt bitter that Ma Ru had gone to prison for five years for his ex girlfriend. 
After venting her frustration, Kiki asked Maru to take her home, and as they returned, Maru's childhood friend, Jay Gill, handed him an envelope. When Maru opened it, he found one billion won inside. It turned out to be Jay He's compensation to him, likely a way to ease her guilt, as she had recently learned that Maru still had feelings for her. However, Maru refused to accept the compensation and chased after Jay He with the check, but she had already left. The next day, Maru went to the wealthy family's house and stuffed the one billion won back into the envelope at Jay He's door. Shortly after returning the money, he received a call from his sister, saying that the police had shown up at their home looking for him. When Maru rushed home, he found out that someone had filed charges against him for threats and intimidation. To his shock, it was none other than his ex-girlfriend, Jae Hee. Maru couldn't believe it. Six years ago, he had gone to prison for five years to protect her, and now, instead of being grateful, Jae Hee had sued him for intimidation and threats. However, Maru refused to plead guilty. No matter what the police asked, he kept invoking his right to remain silent, because he couldn't believe Jae Hee would treat him this way. That was until he heard Jae Hee herself reveal a secret, which was actually about Yoon Ji. After returning home from delivering the one billion won, Jae Hee found Yoon Ji waiting for her in the backyard. Yoon Ji's purpose was clear she wanted to confront Jae Hee about why she had withdrawn one billion won from the company and what her relationship was with the man on the plane who had saved her, and believed Jae Hee had hired the man as a hitman. Jae Hee knew she couldn't let Yoon Ji find out that Ma Ru had once been her boyfriend, or Yoon Ji would discover that Ma Ru had gone to prison on her behalf. So she lies, claiming that Ma Ru had blackmailed her, and that the target of the blackmail was Yoon Ji. Unexpectedly, Yoon Ji also has a weakness in her stepmother's hands. It turns out that seven years ago, Yoon Ji was detained abroad on suspicion of possessing illegal substances. Jae Hee lied that Ma Ru knew about this too. That's why Ma Ru had blackmailed her into handing over 10 billion won. At this point, Yoon Ji is aware that her stepmother is trying to use this incident to suppress her, but she dares not expose her stepmother directly. If other shareholders were to learn about this blemish, it would directly affect her chances of becoming her father's company's heir. So, Yoon Ji chooses to stay silent. Yoon Ji also has her own reasons for not speaking up. Back then, her ex-boyfriend had a criminal record, and he had desperately begged Yoon Ji to take the blame for him, saying, since it's your first offense, you won't be severely punished. To Jae Hee's surprise, the next day, Yoon Ji actually filed a lawsuit against Ma Ru with the police. It seems that Jae Hee's trump card cannot control Yoon Ji at all. Now the lies Jae Hee told to frame Ma Ru have backfired, leading to Ma Ru being taken to the police for blackmail. And sitting next to Jae Hee is the lawyer Yoon Ji specifically sent. To avoid exposing her past relationship with Ma Ru, Jae Hee can only continue to pin the crime on Ma Ru. In the end, however, due to a lack of evidence, Ma Ru is released, as the authorities couldn't find the 10 billion won Ma Ru supposedly gave him. When Jae Hee returns home, the housekeeper approaches and hands her an envelope. Inside was the very 10 billion won she had given to Ma Ru. Luckily, Ma Ru returned the money in time, otherwise he would be facing another nine years in prison. Although Ma Ru managed to escape the check fraud, he returned home to discover that trouble had arisen with his sister Ki Ki Ki. The neighbor informed Ma Ru about it, and soon he rushed to the hospital, where he found his sister still unconscious on the bed. She had been injured twice already because of his ex-girlfriend, making Ma Ru feel even more guilty. At this point, Ma Ru no longer had any compassion left for his ex-girlfriend, but seeking revenge on a wealthy woman was no easy task. He then shifted his focus to Yoon Ji, the heiress of the Taizen group, and started learning more about her personality. Knowing that Yoon Ji had no friends, Ma Ru decided to become her first friend. He also learned that her biggest passion was off-road motorcycling. Using his excellent driving skills, he successfully caught Yoon Ji's attention, but that was only part of his plan. He had already tampered with her motorcycle. As expected, while making a turn, Yoon Ji's motorcycle suddenly went out of control, sliding off a cliff. Ma Ru, following his plan, pretended to pass by, by chance and rescued Yoon Ji. He thought that this would earn Yoon Ji's trust, but instead, Yoon Ji cried, wanting to go back and retrieve her motorcycle, as it held memories of her mother. Seeing this, Ma Ru raised the stakes and promised to retrieve the item for her. It turned out to be a pendant on the motorcycle. Just as Ma Ru retrieved the pendant and prepared to return, the rope he was using to climb back up suddenly snapped. In that moment, Ma Ru realized he had taken too big of a risk. When he woke up the next morning, he was lying in a hospital bed, bruised and injured. Yoon Ji was sitting beside him, which signaled to Ma Ru that his plan had partially succeeded. However, Yoon Ji didn't seem particularly moved instead, she thought his actions were foolish. 
But deep down Yoon Ji-I was touched. To her, Ma Ru was the only person, aside from her late mother, who was willing to risk his life for her. Knowing human weakness as well, Ma Ru realized it wasn't the right time to completely win her over just yet. He needed to make her fall for him completely. So, he coldly dismissed her, telling her to leave. This tactic worked perfectly, as Yoon Ji-I gradually began to feel guilty for Ma Ru's injuries. Whenever she closed her eyes, she saw the image of Ma Ru risking his life to save her. Later, when Yoon Ji-I returned home, she joined her family for dinner. During the meal, she expressed her desire to donate part of her liver to her gravely ill father, but her father scolded her for the suggestion. Her young stepmother, Jae Hee, observed this with a peculiar glint in her eye, though Yoon Ji-I couldn't quite understand what her stepmother's intentions were. Despite the cold response, her words eventually moved her wealthy father. Yoon Ji-I, gradually falling for him, sought him out herself, but Ma Ru continued to play it cool, maintaining his distance. His strategy of playing hard to get was working. Yoon Ji-I was becoming more interested by him. Despite her wealth and status, Ma Ru consistently rejected her gifts, even refusing a luxury watch. This made her increasingly curious about him. While Yoon Ji-I was drawn deeper into Ma Ru's emotional trap, Ma Ru's mind was still set on avenging his first love. Though he had caught Yoon Ji-I's attention, he wanted more. When Yoon Ji-I finally confronted Ma Ru, asking what he truly wanted, his answer was not clear, filled with both a hint of affection and revenge. Before parting, Ma Ru asked Yoon Ji-I to leave him alone, revealing that he was there to take his sister Kiki back. Kiki had returned to a toxic family environment to avoid being a burden on her brother, living with a couple constantly fighting. When Ma Ru arrived, the husband was beating his wife and Ma Ru intervened, only to be met with the wife's ungrateful attitude. Fortunately, Kiki appeared and stopped her mother. Seeing how the stepmother treated Kiki as a disposable object, Ma Ru had had enough and took his sister away. Yun Ji, witnessing Ma Ru's protective nature toward his sister, was deeply moved by his sense of responsibility. Together, the three of them drove away. Meanwhile, Jae Hee had other plans. She declined her husband's offer to transfer valuable assets to her because she had much bigger ambitions. She wanted to take over the entire Taishan group. To win over Lawyer Jin's trust, Jae Hee confessed everything she had done, including how her ex-boyfriend, Ma Ru, had gone to prison for a murder she committed. Jin, seduced by the potential rewards, decided to take the risk and join her in this scheme. However, Jae Hee's husband woke up in the middle of the night to find his wife missing. Sensing something was wrong, at the same time, Ma Ru drove Yoon Ji-I home and stumbled upon Jae Hee's affair with the lawyer. Seeing the chaotic state of his ex-girlfriend's life, Ma Ru's desire for revenge grew even stronger. He seized the moment to flaunt his affection for Yoon Ji-I right in front of Jae Hee, successfully provoking her. Even though Jae Hee had married into a wealthy family, she couldn't handle seeing her ex-boyfriend Ma Ru getting closer to Yoon Ji-I. She tried to sow discord between them, but Yoon Ji-I, a proud and headstrong Harris, wasn't easily swayed by Jae Hee's words. At the same time, the chairman of the family was also starting to have doubts about whether he could trust his much younger wife, Jae Hee, especially after she didn't return home the previous night. He turned to lawyer Jin for answers, but by this time, Jin had already been bribed by Jae Hee and naturally sided with her. Hearing Jin's high praise for Jae Hee, the chairman's suspicions were eased, and he stopped questioning her. Meanwhile, Ma Ru continued to provoke Jae Hee by being close to Yoon Ji-I but avoided revealing their past relationship. Instead, he awkwardly told Yoon Ji-I that he was a fan of Jae Hee when they were in school. The situation became tense, and just as things were getting awkward, the chairman arrived. Seeing Ma Ru next to his daughter, the chairman was immediately suspicious. He questioned Ma Ru but, to his dismay, noticed that his daughter was defending Ma Ru so he reluctantly organized a formal dinner to get to know him. During the dinner, the chairman remained suspicious of Ma Ru, believing that anyone who approached his daughter was likely after her money. His focus on Ma Ru was so intense that he didn't notice his wife, Jae Hee, exchanging flirtatious glances with lawyer Jin right at the table. As the chairman asked Ma Ru about his past, Ma Ru openly admitted that he hadn't graduated from university. This only made the chairman more determined to press for more details, especially about why Ma Ru dropped out. Ma Ru glanced at Jae Hee, who was visibly shaking with fear, but he chose not to reveal their secret past, instead saying he didn't want to talk about it. This response angered the chairman, but before he could react further, Yoon Ji-I, being straightforward and bold, shifted the conversation to criticize her father for marrying a woman five years older than her. She mockingly asked if it was really because of love. 
The chairman was caught off guard by his daughter's boldness and was so furious he couldn't speak. Feeling humiliated, the chairman ordered Jae Hee to deal with Ma Ru. Once the chairman left the room, Jae Hee collapsed into her chair, overcome with the stress of the situation. Jae Hee, confused and unsure, she wonders if she should return to her former life as a commoner, but what she doesn't realize is that Ma Ru's plan is to remind her of the time he spent suffering in prison because of her. Despite successfully winning the affection of Yoon Ji, Ma Ru is still haunted by his past and Jae Hee's betrayal. To make matters worse, Yoon Ji's father disapproves of their relationship and demands they break up, influenced by his distrust of Ma Ru's intentions. However, for someone as skilled in manipulation as Ma Ru, winning Yoon Ji back is an easy task. His efforts pay off and soon enough Yoon Ji is deeply in love with him again, abandoning any thoughts of breaking up and eagerly awaiting their next meeting. In the midst of this, the company faces financial difficulties and decides to sell a valuable resort in Japan. This causes Yoon Ji great distress since the resort was her late mother's pride and joy. Desperate to stop the sale she flies to Japan but feels utterly alone in her efforts. In her loneliness, she reaches out to Ma Ru for support. During the call, Ma Ru overhears a shocking conversation between two women which further opens his eyes to Jae Hee's deceitful nature. Determined to help, Ma Ru decides to fly to Japan that very night to assist Yun Ji Normally, Yun Ji would have been furious at him for showing up unannounced but seeing him in a foreign country makes her forget all her worries. Together they work to prevent the sale of the resort. Ma Ru uses his knowledge of the business to prepare a report and even files an injunction on Yun Ji's behalf. However, by the time they reach the company, the sale has already been finalized. It's Jae Hee shows her true colors by slapping her in public, shocking both Yoon Ji and everyone present. Mental health. Just as Yoon Ji is about to leave the scene in despair, she receives a phone call from Ma Ru. She assumes it's just a comforting call, but Ma Ru has a plan. He instructs Yoon Ji to hand the phone to Richard and put it on speaker. Ma Ru then exposes the truth about Richard. Revealing that his wealth was built on harmful chemicals everyone that she never cared about the contract but only wanted to save the resort. Jae Hee, caught off guard, realizes that her elaborate plan has failed, not because of luck but because she underestimated Ma Ru, her former lover. After everything, Ma Ru wastes no time and asks Yoon Ji out on a date, to which she excitedly agrees. They plan to meet at the resort's park and Yoon Ji is over the moon, completely captivated by Ma Ru's actions and character. However, their conversation is overheard by Jae Hee, who listens to every word from outside the door. Realizing that Yoon Ji's victory wasn't a fluke, Jae Hee acknowledges that Ma Ru is no longer the man she once knew. Determined to gain the upper hand, Jae Hee calls Ma Ru herself, and to her surprise Ma Ru agrees to meet her. She tries to use the past against Ma Ru. Jae Hee realizes that her attempts to manipulate Ma Ru using their past relationship have failed miserably. Desperate, she resorts to extreme measures, attempting to prove no idea that he is engaged in a life-or-death situation with his ex. After successfully reviving Jae Hee, however, once she wakes, Jae Hee immediately reverts to her manipulative ways, trying to establish contact with him again. Ma Ru, now disillusioned and wary of her true nature, refuses to entertain her attempts and leaves the room, realizing he needs to return to Yoon Ji. As he rushes to the resort's park, he remembers that Yoon Ji has been waiting for him all day. When he arrives, he finds her looking delay, she embraces him warmly. After the kiss, the two held hands and walked to a busy street. They officially accepted each other, but in an instant, Yoon Ji realized that Ma Ru suddenly disappeared from her side. While Yoon Ji was searching for him everywhere, Ma Ru stood in a corner watching her. It turns out that Ma Ru approached Yoon Ji with another motive. He successfully got close to the daughter of a wealthy man, but this also caused Han Jae Hee to feel dissatisfied and determined to ruin their relationship. Jae Hee used their past relationship as a way to try and reconcile with Ma Ru, but it was all part of her plan. She had already informed Ma Ru's girlfriend, aiming to cause a misunderstanding between them. However, Yoon Ji didn't go directly to Ma Ru's workplace she went to his house instead. Just as she arrived at the front door, she witnessed an unprecedented professional breakdancing performance. Then, Jigal took Yoon Ji to Ma Ru's workplace. Jae Hee shamelessly claimed she still loved Ma Ru. Faced with his deceitful ex, Ma Ru no longer wanted to believe her. At this moment, Ma Ru received a message from his friend Yoon Ji was about to arrive. Worried about the misunderstanding, Ma Ru prepared to leave, but Jae Hee, who had meticulously planned this scheme, wasn't going to let him leave easily. Her tactics were beyond shameless. As Ma Ru expected, this woman hadn't changed at all. But Ma Ru still kissed her, 
Just as Jay He was triumphantly thinking her plan had worked, Ma Ru suddenly took out his phone and recorded the entire scene. Now it was Ma Ru's turn to fight back. Furious that her plan failed, Jay He angrily smashed Ma Ru's phone. The two began to hurt each other, marking the beginning of a battle between them. But when Jay He was about to leave, it showed that Ma Ru hadn't fully let go of her. At the same time, Yoon Ji I received a photo downstairs. It was a picture of Jay He kissing attorney Kim. This woman had betrayed her own father. At that moment, Yoon Ji I no longer cared about Ma Ru upstairs and hurried to find the Jun Hei, her secretary. It turned out that Jun Hei had long known about the affair between the two, but due to the chairman's health, he had kept quiet. At this point, all she wanted was someone to rely on. Unknowingly, she ended up at Ma Ru's place. Over the phone, Ma Ru sensed something was off with Yoon Ji I. Just as he was about to go find her, he saw her drunk on his way home. Seeing the person she loved right in front of her, Yoon Ji I was finally able to sleep peacefully. The next morning, they share tender moments like a normal couple, expressing their love for each other. However, Yoon Ji I has pressing business matters to attend to. Just as she prepares to leave, a neighbor hands her a shocking photo it's of her stepmother Jae Hee with Ma Ru. Yoon Ji I is left in disbelief, questioning her faith in the world around her. Through the investigation, Yoon Ji I learns about Ma Ru's past, discovering that he and Jae Hee have known each other for 19 years, having once been inseparable. Yoon Ji I feels betrayed and questions Ma Ru's intentions. Jae Hee, with ulterior motives, offers to help Yoon Ji I confront Ma Ru, suggesting that he could make Ma Ru disappear if necessary. This suggestion deeply impacts Yoon Ji I, who, despite knowing Ma Ru's history, refuses to give up on him as he represents her only source of comfort. Meanwhile, the chairman noticed that his daughter hadn't returned home for several days, so he asked Jae Hee to go to Ma Ru's place to find her. But Jae Hee, remembering how they had already torn apart their relationship, began to encourage the chairman to send some thugs instead. At this time, Yoon Ji I was preparing to confess to Ma Ru. After learning about his connection with Jae Hee, Yoon Ji I had made up her mind to break up with Ma Ru. As she predicted, Ma Ru didn't try to stop her. Yoon Ji I tried to stay calm and hold back her tears in front of Ma Ru, but on her way home, she fainted. Coincidentally, it was Jae He who found her while she was searching for Ma Ru. On the other side, Ma Ru was suddenly attacked by a group of men armed with weapons and was knocked unconscious from behind, yet the attackers didn't stop. Soon, Ma Ru was beaten bloody and badly injured. The thugs revealed their reason for attacking him, and Ma Ru instantly understood it was the woman he had always loved who sent them. Meanwhile, the unconscious Yoon Ji I was brought back home by Jae He. When Yoon Ji I woke up, she was extremely worried about Ma Ru, as she vaguely overheard the conversation between Ma Ru and Jae He while she was unconscious. Just as she was about to leave to find Ma Ru, she discovered that someone had locked the door from the outside. How crazy can loving someone make you? Even after being betrayed by her boyfriend, Yoon Ji I still ran barefoot to Ma Ru's house in the middle of the night, despite having a high fever. But it was so late that no one noticed her presence. The long fever left her feeling weak, and just as she was about to leave, Ma Ru, injured, opened the door. Seeing the person she loved right in front of her, all of Yoon Ji I's grudges were released at that moment. Her greatest wish was now to see Ma Ru every day. Ma Ru was deeply moved by her sincerity, and Yoon Ji I was no longer just a tool for his revenge in his eyes. However, fate wasn't kind. Just as the two embraced tightly, Jae He quietly appeared behind them. It turned out that Jae He had learned that Ma Ru had been secretly protecting her despite everything. Feeling guilty, she had come to apologize, only to witness their intimate moment. Ma Ru noticed Jae He standing behind them, but instead of love, his eyes were now filled with the burning fire of revenge. But Jae He was never someone to give up easily. At that moment, her mind was consumed with a single thought, May Ru is mine. She called Ma Ru, saying, My brother is going to kill me, and deliberately shattered a vase to create a tense atmosphere. Stay silent, and knowing Ma Ru's personality, he definitely won't be able to just let it go. Sure enough, as soon as Ma Ru hung up the phone, he immediately drove to Jae He's place. His actions showed that he hadn't completely moved on. Meanwhile, Jae He, after hanging up, quickly dropped her pitiful expression replacing it with a cold, indifferent look. She had already anticipated that Ma Ru would be on his way, so she sent her location to Yoon Ji I. First, she pretended to be helpless to get her ex-boyfriend to come find her, but then in the next moment she sent her location to his current girlfriend, clearly trying to break them apart. Ma Ru, who was in a rush, soon arrived at the apartment. The moment he saw Jae He, he felt as if he had been transported back to their school days. Jae He looked at him with a weak expression, and Ma Ru, feeling sorry for her, asked, Where's the person who hit you? Jae He quickly blamed it on her brother. 
Hearing this explanation, Ma Ru didn't doubt her. After all, her brother had just been released from prison. But just then, coincidentally, Jae Hee's brother called Ma Ru, and through their conversation, Ma Ru learned that her brother wasn't even in the city. Once again, Ma Ru had been fooled by Jae Hee's pity act. Despite this, out of a sense of responsibility as a man, Ma Ru still helped bandage Jae Hee's wounds. Little did he know Jae Hee had more plans to ensure her scheme worked, as she had calculated that Yoon Ji would soon arrive. Yoon Ji witnessed everything and decided to break up with Ma Ru. This moment revealed just how dangerous Jae Hee could be. Jae Hee's desire for success only grew stronger she had sacrificed too much to get where she was. However, what she didn't know was that the chairman had already sent people to investigate and had discovered her relationship with lawyer Kim. The chairman's health was deteriorating day by day, and he feared that his company would fall into Jae Hee's hands. So in his remaining time, he planned to transfer all his assets to his daughter. Just as he was discussing this with his lawyer, Jae Hee entered the room. At that moment, the chairman was unaware of Jae Hee's true intentions and instinctively expressed concern for his wife, asking, What happened to your face? Jae Hee didn't respond, but instead coldly placed the criminal record on the table. The chairman immediately sensed something was wrong, and when he opened the file, it was exactly the evidence he had always feared would be leaked. Jae Hee's intentions were clear she was holding this evidence over him, waiting to see how he would react. The chairman, in disbelief, stared at Jae Hee, unable to understand why she would do this to him. Jae Hee didn't hold back, revealing all the grievances she had endured over the years. Faced with Jae Hee's verbal assault, the already sick chairman suddenly fell ill and reached for his special medication on the table. Jae Hee didn't rush to help. It wasn't until the bottle rolled to her feet that she slowly picked it up, yet even then she didn't stop threatening the chairman. But the chairman could no longer hold on and collapsed. Jae Hee hadn't expected things to go this far. Feeling a pain of guilt, she was about to call for emergency help when lawyer Kim arrived and stopped her. His goal was clear they needed the chairman to disappear to seize the fortune. However, their conversation was overheard by Jun Hee, who had been listening on the other end of the phone. Jun Hee had already recorded the conversation, planning to hand it over to the police. But lawyer Kim was one step ahead, he held incriminating evidence against Jun Hee. It turned out that the death of the chairman's first wife was caused by Jun Hee's father. If Jun Hee exposed them, lawyer Kim would retaliate by implicating Jun Hee's father in the crime. Knowing this, Jun Hee had no choice but to bury the truth deep in his heart. Instead, he sent a message to Yoon Ji, informing her of her father's death. At the time, Yoon Ji had just gone through a breakup, and the sudden news of her father's passing left her devastated. A year quickly passed. By this time, Ma Ru had completely transformed, with no trace of his former warmth. Yoon Ji had mysteriously disappeared a year ago. Jae Hee, on the other hand, had smoothly taken control of most of the group. But she remains a mere puppet even clients do not recognize her authority and mock her for her rise to power through manipulation. After Yoon Ji's disappearance a year ago, Ma Ru has fallen into a deep depression. He can't shake the image of her from his mind. All he wants is to raise money for his sister's medical treatment before vanishing from the world alongside Yoon Ji. His only ally during this dark time is his concerned friend, who is surprised by the drastic changes in Ma Ru's behavior wondering how a once stable person could deteriorate so quickly. The only person who might save Ma Ru is Yoon Ji. Meanwhile, Jae Hee is also searching for Yoon Ji, knowing that the rightful inheritance of the company rests with her. A year has passed with no news of Yoon Ji, and as long as she remains missing, Jae Hee will never truly be in charge of Tai Shan Group, remaining merely as the chairperson. Determined, Jae Hee begins to clear out Yoon Ji's belongings while plotting her next move, as Ma Ru continues his search for Yoon Ji, a year has passed since they were separated. Despite his efforts, it's as if Yoon Ji has vanished without a trace. At this moment, the distance between him and Yoon Ji was no more than a hundred meters. A girl dressed in white was squatting by the roadside, playing with children. The chalk in her hand was drawing the figure of a man, and then she wrote three large characters beside it Ru Ma. These were the three characters that left the deepest impression on her. Apart from that, she had lost all memories of herself. The children beside her were still teasing the girl, saying she even got the characters wrong. Following this familiar voice, Ma Ru looked over and couldn't believe his eyes. In front of him was the lover he had longed for day and night. Then, a pair of large hands appeared, helping Yoon Ji correct the characters. Upon seeing Ma Ru's face, Yoon Ji instinctively spoke his name. She then took out a camera from her bag, filled with photos of her and Ma Ru together. This was the only thing she remembered. Tears uncontrollably streamed down her face. Yoon Ji later finds herself in Ma Ru's small courtyard, 
were the surroundings with a sense of comfort and familiarity, as she begins to piece together her lost memories, it isn't until her assistant reveals the truth that she learns the full extent of her situation a year ago, Yoon Ji was in a car accident that not only caused her to lose her memory, but also altered her personality. To protect her from Jae He's schemes, her assistant had hidden her away. The assistant informs Ma Ru that the chairman's death was definitely not an accident and is likely linked to Jae He's doings. However, Ma Ru, hesitant and burdened by the weight of the past, remains silent and moves closer to Yoon Ji. As tensions rise, Jae He's brother arrives, making Ma Ru instantly get suspicious of his intentions. He turns Yoon Ji's head away and embraces her tightly, fearful that Jae He's brother might see her. This protective gesture exposes Ma Ru's true feelings toward Yoon Ji. Next day, this girl, once the envy of many and now a victim of her circumstances, finds herself deceived by Jae He's brother, who claims he can lead her to the man in her photos. Naively, Yoon Ji rushes to change into her favorite outfit, blissfully unaware that the man in front of her plans to trade her for profit. To prevent any complications, Jae He's brother forces Yoon Ji to drink a special concoction, causing her to lose consciousness. Meanwhile, Yoon Ji's assistant realizes she is missing and immediately contacts Ma Ru. However, she is nowhere to be found. Suspecting that the henchman, Jae He's brother, may be involved, the assistant remembers that Yoon Ji's phone is equipped with a tracking device. Ma Ru grabbed the phone and setting off to find her. Jae He's brother remains unaware of Ma Ru's pursuit, dreaming of the wealth he hopes to gain. When Ma Ru arrives, he begins searching for any sign of Yoon Ji. In a moment, as he turns, he spots a car speeding away with Yoon Ji inside. Rather than panic, a sense of determination washes over him. He knows he is faster than any vehicle on the road. Moments later, Ma Ru intercepts the Jae He's brother. Meanwhile, Ma Ru is overwhelmed with rage as he realizes his girlfriend has been abducted. He seizes the man, demanding to know the mastermind behind the abduction. However, the naive Yoon Ji intervenes, stopping him from pursuing Jae He's brother and causing him to flee. In a fit of anger, Ma Ru lashes out at Yoon Ji, expressing his frustration. Yet his words cut deep, triggering her insecurities. Yoon Ji now feels rejected by the very person she loves. In a moment she refuses to return with Ma Ru, overwhelmed by the emotions. Ma Ru's intentions were solely to protect Yoon Ji by keeping her whereabouts hidden from those at the group, who are actively searching for her. He suddenly realizes that if he can restore Yoon Ji's memories, she will be safe from harm. However, Jae He, now more dangerous than a year ago, is on the hunt for Yoon Ji. She willing to betray even his own brother for financial gain. Meanwhile, Jae He's brother senses danger and contemplates joining forces with Ma Ru to deal with Jae He, but Jae He has already found Yoon Ji and, along with her crew, just as they're about to enter, Jun He arrives to rescue her. While Jun He distracts Jae He's team, Ma Ru manages to reunite with Yoon Ji, chasing her away to safety. He devises a clever plan that not only counters Jae He but also protects Yoon Ji. However, Jae He convenes all board members to remove Yoon Ji of her position as the rightful heir of Taishan Group, arguing that the company cannot remain leaderless given her year-long disappearance. Despite most members agreeing with Jae He's motion, a few dissenting voices rise against her. Now, she is just one step away from complete control of Taishan Group. During the vote, some members mention that the true heir, Yoon Ji, is still alive, which means Ma Ru can only serve as the acting chairwoman. But Jae He was well prepared. She immediately began a passionate speech, claiming that the position of president of the company. This time, no one objected and Jae He finally achieved her long-desired goal of controlling the entire group. Upon receiving this news, the lawyer, Jun He hurriedly contacted Ma Ru, as he was now the only person who could help Yoon Ji. Meanwhile, on Jae He's side, after receiving small votes, she couldn't wait to hold her inauguration ceremony as the president and invited a large number of reporters to hype up her achievement. As Jae He was detailing her contributions to the company, two figures entered the venue. The moment Jae He saw that it was Yoon Ji, the very person she feared, her smile froze on her face, staring in disbelief, but she quickly regained her composure and began to put on an act, tightly hugging Yoon Ji. Yoon Ji then took to the stage and began recounting the year she had disappeared. From her appearance, no one could tell she was a girl who had lost her memory. But this was exactly the plan Ma Ru had come up with. All of Yoon Ji's lines had been prepared in advance to prevent any slip-ups. In front of the crowd, Yoon Ji introduced her fiancé, who had assisted her throughout. Leaving Jae He shocked as her plans backfire. After leaving the venue, Yoon Ji was still in a daze, 
Clearly overwhelmed by what had just happened, Maru quickly pulled her into his arms and gently comforted her. Yun Jiai was puzzled, wondering why Ma Ru was so determined to fight her stepmother, but Ma Ru couldn't tell her the truth just yet everything he was doing was to protect her. Meanwhile, Jae He was deeply affected by Ma Ru's actions during the event. She had expected him to cause trouble, but as luck would have it, just as they exited the elevator, the three ran into each other again. Jae He, pretending to be gracious, invited the two to her home for dinner. Although Maru was a hundred times unwilling, he had no choice but to agree in order to prevent Yoon Ji from slipping up. But the moment they arrived at the house, something Yoon Ji said immediately raised Jae Hee's suspicions. She asks about her father. Sensing that Yoon Ji was close to revealing the truth, Maru countered by saying that when the chairman passed away, Yoon Ji, his daughter, wasn't by his side. She suggested they visit the chairman's room, which served another purpose to get Yoon Ji out of the way. Once Yoon Ji left, the conversation between Ma Ru and Jae He became tense and filled with hidden meaning. Jae He asked Ma Ru why he had come back. Ma Ru didn't give much explanation, only saying that everything he was doing was for Yoon Ji and now his eyes were only on her. Ma Ru had once protected Jae He in the same way, which only deepened her heartbreak. On their way home, Yoon Ji begins to fear the process of regaining her memories. She decides to pursue her memories focusing solely on her time with Ma Ru. As Ma Ru plans a date with Yoon Ji, he overhears her mention Jae He's arrival at the door. Instantly on guard, he rushes to Yoon Ji, aware that Jae He intends to persuade Yoon Ji to leave him and return home with her. Jae He's words trigger memories for Yoon Ji, making her recall past events. Jae He recounts how Ma Ru initially got together with Yoon Ji to exact revenge on her. This painful truth sends Yoon Ji reeling, causing her to collapse in distress. Meanwhile, Ma Ru witnesses this emotional breakdown and feels a mix of frustration and anger, especially as Jae He's taunts brought up old emotions. Jae He sees an opportunity if she can gather evidence of Yoon Ji's amnesia, she could legally assume guardianship over her and gain control over the company's assets. Meanwhile, after a night of treatment, Yoon Ji shows signs of improvement, but when Ma Ru awakens, he discovers she has gone missing. He ultimately finds her in a nearby park, but to his dismay, Yoon Ji still cannot remember him. Ma Ru has no choice but to forcibly bring her back home and uses photographs to bring back her memory. However, this time, Yoon Ji's personality character change, she starts throwing things around, only to fall asleep a few minutes later. During this time, Jae Hee pays a visit, wanting to check on Yoon Ji, but Ma Ru blocks her at the door. Jae Hee believes that Ma Ru still has feelings for her and that Yoon Ji is merely a burden on him. Ma Ru's conflicted gaze reveals staying affection for Jae Hee, which complicates his relationship with Yoon Ji. On the way back, Jae Hee receives a call from lawyer Jin, who has obtained evidence of Yoon Ji's amnesia and is ready to act against her. Despite Yoon Ji's behavior, Ma Ru remains patient and tolerant, eventually discovering that Yoon Ji is not truly amnesiac but is intentionally avoiding memories related to him. This realization allows Yoon Ji to finally express her suppressed emotions, leading her to a breakdown. This revelation fuels her desire for vengeance, overshadowing her romantic feelings for Ma Ru. Yoon Ji dismisses gifts from him and tears out references to Ma Ru from her diary, viewing him as another betrayer. However, when they are together, her affection resurfaces, showing the conflict between her personal feelings and her thirst for revenge. Meanwhile, Jae He, having attained wealth and power, struggles with the loss of true love. Unbeknownst to her, Ma Ru is planning to marry Yoon Ji. Yet, Yoon Ji's intentions are not genuine. Her every move is a calculated part of her revenge against Jae He, even involving her in wedding preparations. On the day of the wedding, chaos ensues when an anonymous reveals scandalous photos of Jae He and Ma Ru, which makes headlines just as Yoon Ji prepares to wed. This shocking truth that her fiancé was once involved with her stepmother threatens to stop the wedding. Unlike a typical reaction of shock and despair, Yoon Ji remains composed, knowing this is all part of her plan to exact revenge. As the wedding approaches, Yoon Ji waits for Ma Ru, who is mysteriously unreachable. Sensing that he may have figured out her true intentions, her intellect leads her to believe he might suspect her memory has returned, she remains anxious. Meanwhile, the chaos ensues when a journalist confronts Jae He about the scandal, and the situation spirals out of control as news spreads quickly despite attempts to contain it. This betrayal leaves everyone, the groom, Ma Ru, never showed up, and even his best friend, started to suspect that Ma Ru had run away. It wasn't until the evening that Ma Ru finally appeared, but instead of giving a direct answer, he took Yoon Ji to the riverside. 
They needed to settle things once and for all. Meanwhile, Jun he heard from his assistant an unexpected piece of news that shocked everyone. Ying Jiai herself had leaked the love triangle involving Ma Ru to the television station. Han Jae He had no choice but to temporarily hide out at Lawyer Jin's house. Even though Ma Ru and Yoon Ji's relationship had fallen apart, Ma Ru still wanted to clear the way for Yoon Ji, so he took the blame for her in front of Jae He. Ma Ru then told Jae He that his love for her had never changed and that he only felt pity for Yoon Ji. Everyone knew it was a lie, but Jae He took his words seriously and began to entertain the idea of continuing her relationship with Ma Ru. However, Lawyer Jin wasn't going to let Ma Ru ruin his plans. He immediately arranged for his people to stop the news from spreading and ordered Jae He not to admit anything. It turned out that Lawyer Jin had long been prepared. Although Lawyer Jin covered everything for Jae He, he had his own agenda. In addition to gaining control of the company, he also wanted to possess Jae He and threaten her. Despite Lawyer Jin's threats, she still took the risk to find Ma Ru, hoping to escape with him. Ma Ru didn't give her a direct answer but instead took the drunk Jae He home, a move that was witnessed by Yoon Ji who was coming downstairs. Even though Ma Ru and Yoon Ji had already cut ties, Ma Ru's expression was still somewhat unnatural and his way of addressing Jae He had changed to president. Meanwhile, Yoon Ji was still plotting her revenge. She sought out the lawyer, Jun He, trying to uncover the true cause of her father's death, which made Jun He visibly anxious. Her father's death had some connection to Jun He, and it seemed he had made up his mind about something. Jun He went alone to Ma Ru and handed over a recording that should have been destroyed. The recording revealed the entire process of how Jae He and Lawyer Jin conspired to kill Chairman. With this recording taking down Lawyer Jin would be easy. However, Jun He feared for his own safety, so he gave Ma Ru a backup of the recording before heading to Lawyer Jin's office. When Jun He presented the recording card, Lawyer Jin was happy, but he didn't forget to threaten Jun He using his father's matter. Meanwhile, after repeatedly listening to the recording, Ma Ru began to feel that Jae He wasn't the real culprit and decided to give her a chance, advising her to confess in exchange for a lighter sentence. The two reminisced about their sweet past and embraced each other, crying. But all of this was seen by Yoon Ji, who had followed them. Before her plan could be executed, Yoon Ji received news that Jun He had been in a car accident. His injuries were severe, and he had fallen into a deep coma. Furious, Yoon Ji blamed Ma Ru for hiding the truth from her and directed all her rage toward Lawyer Jin and Jae He. Driven by suspicion, Yoon Ji insists on searching Jae He's belongings, fearing that Jae He may be hiding something sinister. In a tense showdown, Yoon Ji demands that Jae He remove her shirt before entering the hospital room. Jae He complies without hesitation, but just as she is about to remove her final piece of clothing, Ma Ru intervenes effectively preventing Jae He from being humiliated. Concerned for her safety, Ma Ru begins to avoid Yoon Ji, even showing up in her most private moments, such as brushing her teeth or using the restroom, waiting silently outside. This behavior confuses those around them, especially the lawyer, who wonders where Ma Ru's true loyalties lies, whether he is supporting Yoon Ji or still in love with Jae He. As days pass, Ma Ru realizes that merely following Yoon Ji isn't enough. The danger is too great, prompting him to confront the lawyer directly in his office. He warns him to stay away from Yoon Ji and urges him to turn himself in. However, the lawyer, with his ruthless nature, is unfazed by Ma Ru's threats and warns him not to overstep his boundaries. Ma Ru pulls out the recording given to him by Jun He, capturing incriminating conversations that could implicate him. Unbeknownst to Ma Ru, Jae He is stalking nearby and overhears the conversation, creating a dilemma for her. She finds herself torn between wanting to maintain control over the company and her desire to reconcile with Ma Ru. Meanwhile, the lawyer, aware of the threat Yoon Ji poses to Jae He's standing, is determined to eliminate any risks to his control. Ma Ru aims to protect Yoon Ji, encouraging Jae He to turn herself in to the police, believing that doing so will resolve their issues. Just as Ma Ru exits, he finds himself weak, leaning against a wall, Barely managing to hold on until Jay Gill arrives to assist him, Maru wakes up and with the doctor advising him that his chances of survival post-surgery are slim. At this moment, Jay He begins to waver in her resolve against turning herself in, reflecting her internal struggle as she grapples with her feelings for Maru. When she learns of his deteriorating health, she immediately rushes to the hospital, where she unexpectedly crosses paths with Yoon Ji. Despite their bad relationship, they are united in their concern for Maru. Jae He reveals Ma Ru's deteriorating health condition to Yoon Ji, 
prompting her to recall the bike accident. This moment of realization fills Yun Ji with guilt, leaving her too ashamed to face Ma Ru. As she grapples with her emotions, she walks the streets, reminiscing about their shared moments, and tears begin to flow. Meanwhile, Jae Hee is equally distraught, feeling the weight of having hurt the one man who cared for her. But lawyer Kim is making his final preparations at this moment. He is determined to offer his last value for Jae Hee. Yun Ji I, unaware of all this, is slowly walking in this direction. When she sees Jae Hee's call, she immediately hangs up, not realizing it's a life saving call. Perhaps if she had answered, the ending would have been completely different. At the same time, Ma Ru, who is at the hospital, hears from Jay Gil that Yoon Ji had just been there, so he rushes out, searching for her everywhere. In that moment, Yoon Ji also lets go of her hatred and, without hesitation, goes to find Ma Ru. Finally, the two meet at an intersection, walking toward each other, and everything seems so perfect. But behind Yoon Ji, Ma Ru suddenly notices a figure approaching. His mind goes blank in an instant, and he endures the pain, trying not to let Yoon Ji notice. I'll answer you tomorrow, he told her, knowing that he couldn't hold on much longer. Ma Lu could only tell Yoon Ji that the most important answer would come tomorrow. After Yoon Ji left by car, Ma Ru finally couldn't hold on any longer and collapsed to the ground. He wanted to live for Yoon Ji, but his consciousness was gradually fading. Meanwhile, Jae Hee finally made up her mind and went to the police station to turn herself in. She wanted to clear Ma Ru's name and confessed all the wrongs she had committed over the years, as well as how Ma Ru had taken the blame for her. Ten years quickly passed. Ki K married Jae Gil, and the family was living happily together. This day also marked the day that lawyer Jin was released from prison. From afar he saw Jae Hee waiting in the car, but this time lawyer Kim seemed to have let go of his obsession. The two didn't meet, and Jae Hee had only been released for six months. Having already resolved her regrets, it was time to start a new life. Meanwhile, in a remote mountain village, a doctor who had returned from the United States suddenly appeared. However, he had lost all his memories due to a surgery, except for the strong feelings he had for the girl in front of him. They both finally reunite after 10 years, marking the new phase of their new relationship. Thanks for watching. Please like and drop a heart if you like the story.